Life is life. A similarly simple and what should be self-evident and uncontroversial fact is that life serves no function in the universe. The universe doesn't need it and none of us needed it prior to our conception. Life is life. Life is a mechanical process. Nothing more, nothing less. There's nothing dignifying about a body breaking down, rotting every freaking day. It's just um, consuming, reproducing molecule doing its its mechanical function. Life is a requirement of all harms. No harms exist without it. We are inhabitants of a vessel that is going to nowhere when it's... We recognize the mechanism and we want to end it. Have the intelligence, A, not to be blinded by the pursuit of money, sex and power, and B, to take the clues that are offered and to put those clues together and to solve the puzzle and to not waste a lot of time with distractions and irrelevancies. That's what Buddha did. He saw the sick man, the old man, the dead man. He said, I figured it out, I got it. I'm gonna go be a yogi. Contrast that with everyone else, the rest of us, right? How many of us have never been sick? How many of us have never had a person in our family who was sick? How many of us don't have anyone in our family who's growing old and feeble? And how many of us have never experienced a death in our family? None of us. We've all experienced those things. And yet, most of us, in spite of having experienced those things, are busy spinning the wheel, playing the game, pursuing all the trappings of money, sex, and power to the utmost of our ability. The better job, the higher salary, the bigger house, more furniture to put in the house, the more beautiful wife, more handsome husband, the fancier car, the vacation home, more vacations, better food, better drink, etc. That's how most of us are engaged with this pursuit of money, sex, and power. And we never get off that hamster wheel. We never stop playing the game long enough or just stop long enough to look at what's going on, to work on the value equation, to pull out the scales, say, Here's the broad and deep pain and suffering, goes on the left hand. Let's balance that against all the trite pleasures and delights, the chocolate-covered strawberries that go on the right. Do the scales balance? Most of us never even bothered to work on that equation. The Buddha didn't even waste his time with that. He knew instantly what the truth was. Of course the scales don't balance. Not even close, okay? And he didn't even bother with that. Really, this isn't, in principle, a very difficult thing to understand. You don't need to rack your brain with a lot of torturous philosophical struggle. You don't need to have a library full of books and read Sartre and Schopenhauer and Nietzsche or even David Benatar. There's nothing wrong with that. It's better than going to the bar and getting drunk. But you don't need to do that. This is a fairly simple, straightforward concept that anybody can understand if they put their mind to it. Life is suffering. Life sucks. I'm short and redundant. Life is upset. The stain upon this earth. I know what life is. I know that life is pain. I know that life is suffering. Suffering for no reason. Life is infinite pain that can only be finite if we end life itself. All we can do is to end life. It's time to end life's drunken rain on earth. And that is by preventing further existence of it. You either get it or you don't.